Oh, Gary Nasai Minasan. Today we're gonna talk about Kamen Rider Gachado episode 16. This is the episode after the crossover movie with Kamen Rider Gears, and a lot, I have to say, a lot has been changed during the movie itself. Firstly, Rene has become a Kamen Rider during the movie itself because she actually talked about how she is not able to henshin in this episode because she is too weak to henshin after doing so many alchemy in the in previously something like that so after she mentioned this dialogue it actually makes me wonder like why is she so tired and why we never actually get to see hotaro getting tired when he actually henshin into camera the gacha itself like but why on, why does this only happen to Rene and not towards Hotaro itself? And I, I, I have a few theory. Firstly, is because Hotaro is not henshin using his own power, but he is actually using the power of the chemist to henshin. So that is why he is not tired. He don't actually felt <laughs> the. Oh, I'm so sorry. He don't actually felt the need to recharge after fighting and and all those stuff. Okay, so maybe that is. A, a possibility but another possibility is that maybe Hotaro is being blessed by a lot a lot of so-called alchemy power but I, I feel like a lot of us who knows about alchemy and how does alchemy works you don't really have kind of like an alchemy power something like that for you to access the power of alchemy something like that but what if but in according to the law of Kamen Rider Gachado, maybe there is the possibility of, of what is actually happening. Like Hotaro is, is actually blessed with a lot, a lot of alchemy inside his body. But there is also another possibility where I really want to entertain here is what if, what if Hotaro is not human? What if Hotaro is a homunculus? What if he himself is a product of alchemy itself? And, and I think the reason why I have this theory is because of someone, one of you guys actually commented in, in my previous video mentioning how, how the Abyssal Sister could actually be homunculus themselves. And I think there is a huge, huge possibility on, yeah, the three Abyssal Sister are actually homunculus itself. Because in the previous video, I actually talked about how the three Abyssal Sister don't actually refer themselves as human, but they look human, they act like human. And what other thing that has association with human and association with alchemy homunculus okay homunculus is the answer here and i felt like if if hotaro turns out to be uh homunculus itself it is gonna make so much sense on why he's able to just henshin and henshin and henshin again without any side effect at all and i we maybe he is kind of like the perfect guy like the perfect homunculus something like that or maybe i'm just reading too much into this and I'm, I'm i'm just wrong okay maybe there's a possibility but with that being said let us talk about what happens to the three abyssal sister in this episode because Gleon has made his appearance he has made an entrance in, by the end of this episode but we actually get to see him at the beginning of this episode giving a lot a lot of terror to Lakesi and Cloto itself. And it turns out that Atropos is the only one that is like actively talking to Gleon and Atropos is the one that is not afraid of Gleon at all. But we actually get to see like Cloto and Lakesi is a little bit afraid of Gleon. Like even like the moment like Lakesi received the so-called gift from Gleon, she is in pain, she is afraid, she's screaming out for help. It's like, help me, help me and all those stuff. And I know in the previous episode a review breakdown, I actually talk about that maybe like Atropos is the, gonna be the only girl that's gonna get saved from the dark side. But right now, I'm actually kind of changing my thoughts about it a little bit. I really felt like Atropos is gonna be the final final villain together with Gleon, but Cloto might actually be dead. And like I see, is gonna be the one that is gonna at the end of the day become a, a good girl itself. So that is really, really subarashi that we actually get to see that happening. So 
yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what is going to happen moving forward, but the three abyssal sisters are no longer the main threat of the story itself, as not especially not Lakesi and especially not Kloto, because right now they are they are even being controlled by Gleon itself. And 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 the, we get to see that happening to Lakesi. She was being forced in close submission by Gleon and she became the Malgam of the Jab Jama no Orochi itself. So it's really, really scary for us to actually get to see that happening to Lakesi. And Atropos is like doesn't give a shit at all. You know, like she is like that cold. She is that heartless itself. Okay. So really, really Subarashi thing that we actually get to see here. But like I mentioned in my kind of like movie trailer breakdown, something like that, I actually talk about how in this episode, a lot, a lot of things in the movie actually carries into this episode, like Rene becoming a rider, and we also get to see Kudo Fuga appearing in the movie itself. And man, like there is a lot, a lot of things, man, like happening in the movie that I really, really hope that we do actually get to see it sooner than later, okay? Because this is the beginning of Act 2. This is the beginning of Kamen Rider Gachado Phase 2. Everything is moving at a higher speed right now. I felt like phase one is very, very slow, very, very mundane, but I, I think they learn from their mistake and they are like picking up a notch, like they're just moving everything in a more high speed manner. They introduce Gleon and in the next episode, there's a lot, a lot of things is going to happening like really, really soon. Okay. So let me talk about the next thing and that is the existence of another driver itself. We actually get to see that in this episode, Kyoka, the teacher the master of spana is actually developing another rider uh, another driver for spana itself it is really really interesting that the alchemy the the alchemy association is able to do that and and it makes sense that the alchemy association is able to do that because one thing we need to remember is that kudo fuga belongs to the alchemy association in the past itself so they might not be able to recreate the driver from the get-go but eventually they are able to keep to kind of like chess up to his achievement and all the stuff and they are able to create their own driver it might not be as perfect as the one that gacha actually have but maybe it is is gonna have a little bit of flaws and all the stuff we, we are not sure okay but I'm just really, really excited for Spana because he's going to become the next Kamen Rider Valvara itself. So really, really Subarashi. Valvara is able to become a Kamen Rider. Rene is able to become a Kamen Rider. And lastly, who is going to be the next Kamen Rider Dread? Who is it going to be? I'm, I'm pretty sure Gleon is going to become that, that character moving forward. Like he's just going to use the dread driver moving forward or maybe not okay maybe we're not gonna see dread driver for a while until in the future something like that okay i think that is gonna be really really fun but then again we are not sure okay we are really really not sure like what is gonna happen but another thing that is like really really interesting that we see in this episode is regarding the hair of Kamen Rider Valvarat and that is Spana itself he actually cut short his hair that is really really rare in a Kamen Rider franchise where we actually get to see a character cut his hair halfway through the series it is usually they have a they have a cut in the beginning of the series and then their hair is just gonna be like it's gonna grow longer over the se over the series and then they're never gonna cut the hair but spana cut his hair for some weird reason i think it is fine he looks good I don't mind at all but yeah i think it's amazing that we actually get to see someone getting his hair cut something like that another thing that i felt really really surprised to hear from kyoka itself is the full sentence that we hear from the trailer itself she actually talked about like how everything is a tool and that is why we need to treat them with care because if, if we don't treat them with care they are gonna rust so this is a very very interesting statement because even though they look at people as a tool but they don't look at tools as useless and and and, and like something that can be thrown away something like that but they, they look at tools as something that will actually benefit them 
and, and empower them and all those stuff so they need to be treated with care and all those stuff okay so i think that is like really really amazing really really smart for us to actually get to see that hopefully we get to see more of kyoka moving forward maybe she is gonna become kind of the the power up genius that we see in the series like all the power ups is gonna come from her she's gonna be the josh karizaki of camera the gacha itself i think it's gonna be really really fun but i think a lot a lot of you guys are actually like really wants to talk about the next big thing okay but before that i really want to talk about smart nah, just a little bit more because in this episode we do actually get to see him kind of like struggling with himself like he's doubting himself he's not the Kamen Rider he's have I'm, I'm not sure what emotion he actually have he, he he might have I think he's in a huge dilemma he, he he wants to be the Kamen Rider but he doesn't want to snatch that away from Gachat and, and he wants to but he still wants to be that you know be important he still wants to be able to help out and all those stuff and and he, that is why in this episode when, when Hotaro asked him to like go evacuate the other people he'd be like don't kid me I'm a rank A alchemist blah 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 and then Hotaro be like shut the hell up I'm the Kamen Rider here and then Barbara be like he couldn't say anything okay because Hotaro spot the truth he can only obey so he actually went ahead and, and evacuated the people together with Rene so that is really really crazy for us to actually get to see that's just a minor part of Spana which I really love I think his acting also improved quite a lot in this episode so good job as well but moving forward okay I feel like we need to talk about Kamen Rider Gacha Daybreak Daybreak Gacha Gacha Daybreak Fire Gacha whatever you want to call it you want to call it the orange Gacha the blue Gacha the Power Ranger Gacha whatever Gacha you want to call it but there is another Gacha that is what we need to talk about who is this Gacha why is he here is he the future Hotaro is he the father of Hotaro I felt like the answer is not gonna be that obvious okay because the the, the driver the attachment that he uses is actually the attachment that Kamen Rider Valvarat is gonna use on his driver as well so this is kind of like telling us that hey this daybreak gacha could actually be from the future or maybe from an alternate timeline itself because of the introduction of Kamen Rider legend be of of this uh, possible of parallel earth and all those stuff so who who is to say that like there is a possibility that in the future there is a gacha that is gonna use the power out system of Valvara itself and, and I think that is gonna be really really interesting if that is the case but another thing regarding the daybreak gacha that is really really fun is the the design of the chemical that he uses the design of the chemical are all having a little bit of kind of like fiery design and all the stuff and that is why his suit actually become kind of like an orangey color something like that so I Thing, if if my theory is right that he is not actually directly from the future but he is actually from an alternate version of the future itself um yeah and and, and he actually came back here to kind of like help out with the um, with the mess or something like that or maybe he is just a, a alternate dimension gacha something like that and the reason why i i would think so is because hopper one Kamen Rider Gacha seems to be a reference to Ichigo and when there is an Ichigo there needs to be a Nigo okay so and what better Nigo is there than another Kamen Rider Gacha itself okay so really really fun stuff but yeah I'm, 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 not, I'm not sure who is gonna be this Daybreak Gacha Fire Gacha but if it is actually the father of Hotaro it's gonna be really insane because they have been teasing and teasing and teasing the possibility that hey this is the father of Hotaro itself and Hotaro's father is definitely gonna come and Minato seems to know a little bit about what is happening like like he says that hey it's finally happening and all the stuff so yeah we are not sure what is going on but 
maybe another possibility that I have about the David Gachak is that this guy is actually the dawn of the alchem the, the dawn alchemist itself. Remember back in back back in episode two, we learned the, the history of Gleon, the, the Gleon and also the, the Dawn Alchemist itself. There is a hopper one on the shoulder of the Dawn Alchemist. What if Daybreak Gachat is actually the Dawn Alchemy itself? Because it is well, who else could it be? Okay, who else could it be other than the 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 myth, the legend from the legend itself? So yeah, those are my ideas, those are my theory. Feel free to comment them in the comment section below like just discuss the idea i'm really excited to talk about it with all of you guys but that is all from me if you made it this far into the video it means you love the content and you want to see more so just comment a word called ever ready in the comment section below because you are always ready and ever ready to watch my video that is all goodbye